Welcome to What the Flicks review of The Walking Dead Season 4, Episode 15, Us. Just the <laughs> two of us, or three of us. Uh, I'm Kim Horcher, and this is Joan Iderola and Tim Frisch. And we're going to talk all about Reunited, and it feels so good. Our loving couple, it's back in each other's warm embrace, but not for long, I imagine. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I'm surprised by their ability to take a theme like us and actually, like, each each day they do, or each week, I guess I should say, they do a word like that. And they do manage to make it feel relatively consistent between the groups. Mm -hmm. And I, know, I like that in this episode, you see such different versions about what us means to these groups. I know it's kind of oh, sappy, but I, I like that. I like the sappiness. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as I mentioned, Glenn and Maggie are reunited together in a very convenient scene in which <laughs> she saves the day and saves Tara's life and Tara is, has been following Glenn around, ridden with guilt about what she's done. Obviously, Sasha and Bob recognize her, but they haven't really said anything about it yet. Maybe uh, she won't react as well as Tyrese did when he, she, when he found out what Carol had done to him. Yeah, I actually did not get that they recognized her. I, think I did think did. it was weird that nobody did, but yeah, I hadn't noticed it. By the way, the, the, the scene where they, where they rescue them when he's desperately like willing to sacrifice himself for Tara and all that, how much ammo did they waste in that scene? Jesus Christ. I thought it was just Go like an automatic weapon or something mounted on the I car. Know. I thought like. It looked like it was all of them. I thought yeah. it was just the scientists like. Yeah. <laughs> there was so many people. had like seven headshots in a row and it was like, okay, we're yeah. all good at this now. At this stage in the game, we're great. You better be at this stage in the game. You would think. So then Maggie decides that she's going to convince Glenn to burn a picture of her, which is possibly foreboding and possibly a reference to the Terminator. What? Uh, but she says, you're never going to need another picture of me and burns it, which... It's a bold statement bold. in the zombie apocalypse. Uh, I don't get burning the picture. I mean, I guess she's vain and she didn't think it was a good picture or That's something. That's how I would trick my boyfriend into burning a picture that I hate of myself. Oh, I don't like that picture. Burn your <laughs> smartphone. <laughs> I am a little bit worried now from what you'd said that she's going to die in the next episode, but I guess we'll I'm see. I'm really scared that one of them is not going to make it through the end of the season. Yeah, I'd rather get rid of Maggie, but... Yeah, so we were building towards that, like, finding her. I didn't think that we would get back to her in that episode. I thought that they would wait until the next one. Um, they sort of, like, wrapped it up very cleanly, like, that they had, the scientist had tricked uh, Rosita into Just circling around, around, and then suddenly they found them. Like, I feel like they accelerated so fast right there. Uh, but I guess I'm glad, because they do have so many groups, they have to start consolidating for, for the next episode. So now we have two or three groups together, um, and we found out that Daryl's band of murderers and rapists are out to get Rick, and they know what he looks like, and they're going to hunt him down. I'm very worried about what will happen when Rick meets up with the group. Well, important no point to note, one of them knows what Rick looks like, and his head looks very crossbow bolt ready. Oh. Maybe they take him out so that oh. it doesn't betray the whole group. I'm very worried they're going to get into a fight, and Michonne might not realize Daryl is in the group and chop his head off. Maybe. Or they, something like that. I don't know. They alluded earlier in the season that they wanted to rape Michonne. They didn't know her at the time, but she was going to come back to the house, and they said, oh, uh, when she gets back, I got first dibs. Claimed. No. Claimed, exactly. No, upsetting. <laughs> um, the, the ass end is still an end. Yes. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I hate yeah. you. <laughs> I, I hate you just a little bit. Just trying to tie the episode yeah. into it. Yeah. So, so they're, they, they're walking on their way to Terminus. Uh, we still, Eugene is telling the group, well, they're saying that Eugene knows how, how this all started and how to solve it. I think he's lying. I think he has an ulterior motive, and he's tricked these two s soldiers into having a new mission. And I, I don't think he knows anything. I feel like is in DC. I feel like he's secretly just a science teacher or something, and he's He's trying overblown. to keep them together, I think. He knows that they need a mission. He has a plan, and he's united them with a mission. Yeah. Well, I mean, his whole thing of navigating and going back to the train tracks was like the first smart thing we've ever seen him done. Yeah. So for this genius, he doesn't do a lot of smart things. It's on lesbians. I do like his theory about dinosaurs being zombies that killed each other. That's an interesting theory. Yes. That's a great retcon right there. That was a great, that was a great cold open for the record. Exactly. <laughs> Just that conversation. Like what sort of game? Or, did he say smut? As a type of game? It did sound like that to me on first wow. lesson. I didn't go back, but I like this guy. I mean, yeah. he sounds like your new buddy. Anyway, we make it all the way to Terminus, finally. 
with all groups in tow. An episode mm -hmm. early, I thought. An episode early. Ooh, we're really fast before tournaments. We have another group we haven't gotten to. My Rick and group. Michonne and Carl. Oh, oh you're right. That's my candy. little game and you're stuff. Right. Oh. Do you think she, did she throw the competition, Michonne? Of course she did. Yeah, she probably did. Of course did. she did. But she he was did. nice. He gave her candy and everything. They're, they're selling like, together a friendship. I like that we do now, considering where Rick sort of went to over the past couple seasons, like that he's smiling at them, he's happy. It's not usually a good sign in the show when no. you're happy, but that, that their version of us is that they all work together very well and they're balancing sort of familiarity and comfort with each other, but they're all very well prepared to live in this world. You don't often have both of those things in a group. That's true because, well, we've seen with this kind of apocalyptic world, people who weren't useful in, our, in the world that maybe we're used to right now, They've they've evolved. Like Daryl yeah. was kind of a nothing, and now he's one of the most valuable assets. And Carol was this abused, scared woman, and now she's strong beyond belief. Yeah, um, over nine thousand. Yeah, over <laughs> nine thousand. Yes. Uh, re really fast again, just because I was thinking about this. So we have uh, the Daryl's group. I really like that we got to see sort of the inner workings of it. I can't believe that they killed that guy over the rabbit thing. I assume this wasn't his They're first brutal. offense. But so a couple questions about that. So. Do you really think that that group long term could survive in the world? Like I know they're capable, they have their bows and stuff, but they just seem so rife for the sort of violence that we saw in this episode. And we saw the last time that they were on the show. They're too destructive. They kill a person in their group every time we yes, see them. Yes, they're, they're, they say, oh, we do this so we don't have a, a battle every five minutes. Well, you're still having them every ten minutes. Eventually your group's not going to exist anymore or it's just going to be too like much of a target or threat to other groups so that they yeah. might uh, gang up on them. It's a weird sort of logic because they recognize more than anyone that you do need a group, that that's essential. Yeah. That it's like not an option to go it on your own. Mm -hmm. And they have this weird hierarchy set up where clearly, you know, Joe, was that his name? Harley, I think is his name. Oh, he's in charge. Yeah. But he's in the grizz most grizzled. In, of in, I he was in a Joe. way that like only so much as that he establishes and adjudicates on the rules. Mm. And beyond that, it's chaos. Yeah. Because all of these guys, you know, want to do whatever they want. But under this strange anarchy guideline type thing, mm -hmm. it works for them. It seems to work well. Well, we don't know how much turnover there is in that group. I mean, like we said, we've seen two I people die already. I think there's going to be a lot of turnover in that group. I don't know that those rules would really work. Like, unless, like, it can't just be that you're claiming everything you see, because then people would just be running ahead to see stuff all the time. Like, I feel like people are probably, like, they, they understand that it's claiming, but it's also there is a power dynamic between different people in the group. And if you know that this dude's about to claim something, you don't jump in front of him every time. It seems like it works the way I imagine a wolf pack works. Mm -hmm. Like you've got yeah. your alpha male and everybody else can like grab their scraps and everybody eats yeah. and the group survives. But there's always that power struggle going yeah. on. And well, the rules are just so loose. Yeah, and they don't even always follow them to the letter. Yeah. But I like that you brought up the alpha male thing because we can't help but notice that they don't have any females in their group. We have to assume yeah, that the joke about- Yeah, they would rape them. <laughs> exactly, but, but so that, that's my point. So you have a group that is, amongst all the groups we've seen, seems like the most likely to succeed in this world. Except at the end of the day, it's six dirty hip, like I guess Harley riders from the past with bows walking around with no women They've given themselves sort of a mission in chasing down Rick, but what is the purpose of life if that's all you have, is trying to claim your rabbit end from oh, other assholes? This, <laughs> okay, so I think th that raises a question about the whole series in general. Is life worth living even if you're in this hell, even if you're living for 10 minutes and only two minutes of that 10 is good? If I you're mean, in Rick's group, I think yes. If you're yeah, in their group, I but think it's no. just like, it's, it's a balance of, is this worth it? Do I actually want to survive? Is, am I a better person who deserves to survive, et cetera? Mm. And I guess to that group, I would say, no, you don't deserve to survive. Just because you're, yeah. you're strong, they, don't, they lack the humanity that Rick's group has. Yeah, definitely. And I really want Michonne to kill all of them. All of them? We saw yes. her cutting off some heads in the preview for the next episode. They were more likely zombies. I need her to kick their ass for yeah. some poetic justice. <laughs> Um, okay, so we, we did get to Terminus, though. I did jump the gun on Terminus, but can we talk about Terminus? Mm -hmm. Oh my I mean, gosh. We can talk about as much as we know, yeah. which is a Well, I have some theories that are popular fan theories, but let's talk about what we know first. Uh, they enter Terminus, there's some really sappy music playing, there's sunflowers, there's a lady with a barbecue of meat there. 
There's no we're guards. In, we're in the speculation at all. Yeah, no, yeah. nothing's no locked. Guards. I nothing said it was locked, me. Even. No, the, the gate's like totally unlocked. They walk in. She says, you must have had a long journey. I think that bitch knew they were coming. Mm -hmm. Maybe she could have been doing some kind of spying. They seem very, she at least I should say, seems very confident that they're not even locking the gates. I have to assume, like first of all, I was obviously wrong about this entire place because I thought it would be like hundreds if not thousands of people. One Apparently, person. at least only one person that we see so far. But my speculation is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my prediction. I don't think that that is what Terminus was. I think that's what Terminus is. It seems has like become. has become. Like it might have been an organized group at one point that actually would meet you at the gate to take your guns or whatever. But it's possible that like it fell apart or was attacked or someone took over and now it's this weird thing with the weird echoey voice in the preview for the next episode. It seems that's my speculation. It seems like and and we'll see what Terminus is, but it's like two directions that a Woodbury type establishment can go. Mm -hmm. You either have this crazy dictatorial leader that calls all the shots, or you have what, you know, becomes you know, either like this socialist utopia where everybody pulls their weight and survives together, or this crazy Prison cannibal kind of. cult. Sort Which of. it might be. Yeah. Well, let me go over a little bit of the theories that are out there right now. Um, one is someone seems, well, many people seem to think that the sweater Mary is wearing is the sweater Beth was last seen in. Oh, I did not see that. Yeah, so some people are saying. Well, called them the same size at all. No. <laughs> but anyway, if that is Beth, Beth's sweater, where is Beth? Oh, we, we saw, the last we saw her, she was being taken off in a car. And we have to assume that whatever else we know about the people who run Terminus, they're organized. The fact that they can go out and mark all these signs far away, days away, implies that they have cars and they're safe and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that they did kidnap Beth. There's also some allusions to an earlier episode this season. Uh, episode 11 claimed, this is when Michonne is in the house and she's looking at, remember the paintings that she was looking at? One of them was, a sunflower, you'll remember there are sunflowers right outside Terminus. Mm -hmm. There's one, there's a very scratched out painting of a woman with a braid over one's shoulder. She's a mirror image of Mary. Mm. What happened? She, she might have lived there before? She may have lived there. I don't know why the painting's all scratched up you, with, you know, X's and cross outs. Go back and watch this again. Yeah, no, so, I, would have, I would have said those paintings foreshadow each episode that comes after it because there is one with rabbits. Mm -hmm. There is uh, one with a dog, and Daryl and Beth find that dog. The flowers episode I would have given to the one with would Carol you and the girls. consider this more of an Easter egg? That f Easter egg that was uh, put in by writers, or is it there from uh, deliberately as a, a character maybe moved on later? I mean, it seems it, more Easter egg if you're if you're what you're saying is right. Yeah, it's an Easter egg, but there's a whole scene about it. They walk around and they look at all the paintings, and Carl and Michonne make a big deal out about it. So. Hmm. So it's pretty substantial, but Something I don't, I don't, about. I don't see those paintings being like directly related, like painted by somebody yeah. from Terminus. Why That's was a, the woman all scratched up in the painting? And who was the woman? Because some she people think she was a woman with brown hair. But the thing is, that like her indicates the Half Life Three is going to come out soon. I think. Nailed it. No, <laughs> no. Yeah, three but scratches. It's a, it's a, it's a you know, the braid is just this, exactly the same as her braid. Like, why would they do that? Why would they intentionally put that I'm just glad that, that The Walking Dead is doing this, because now I'm excited. There's all this, like, speculation stuff and stuff. Talk this about is great. And that woman is bad, class. is what I'm saying. And yeah, then people... she doesn't seem nice. No. And no, nobody's voice echoes like that in the preview in the preview for the next episode. Oh, That's geez. crazy. <laughs> and, like, one thing that I am glad about is that despite the fact that I was wrong about how, I, I guess, how colonized Terminus would be. It does seem clear that it has uh, an authority figure, and so my wish to have them sort of be under the yoke of another person and see how they deal with that, that seems likely to come true. I think most of this season has been convincing us that Rick's not the main character anymore. Yes. Is that we see so little of him and his plot is so tertiary to everything else that we're excited about mm -hmm. is that we're no longer like living and breathing and dying with Do Rick. Do you think yeah. they have a plan to kill off Rick? Nah. I don't I think it's the worst so. idea for the show. I, 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 I don't think Because I'm... he's the heart and soul of the comics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're so far from the comics at this point. Yeah. I mean, not so far, but they're, I think the writers are willing to go other directions. And yeah, and I, I think that this episode is a perfect example of that because like, it's one thing when they have an episode with, uh, with Tyrese and, and they don't even show Rick. You understand that, they want to focus on a group. But in this episode, they actually went to the group, but they didn't feel any need to stay in the group for very long. Like, it almost seems like it's more of a slight to put them in for three minutes than to put them in for zero minutes. That's what I think. Interesting, so what do you think will happen in the finale? What do you think has been set up for us? I think 
Rick, Michonne, and Carl are already at Terminus when Glenn and party arrive. And they know the CD truth of what happens there. And I think they're either already dead or already dismantling what's going on in Terminus or, you know, they're trapped. Maybe Glenn's party becomes a rescue party. I think, I think we're going to get a little flashback to... To whatever they were doing. Whatever whole happened time. to them when they got to Terminus. Well, as someone pointed out in one of the reviews I read, this show is not in the habit of creating very elaborate sets and then only using them for an episode or two. Mm -hmm. So I would assume that we're going to be at Terminus for half a season or more. Right. Um, if that's the case, then we can't expect that it's going to be completely destroyed in the finale. I mean, they're probably going to set up big conflict. A likely conflict seems between Rick and, and the group uh, with Daryl. Like, it seems likely that something like that is going to happen. Possibly finding some evidence that Beth is there right near the end could be a good uh, thing to lead Daryl to want to go in there. Um, I don't, in terms of uh, uh, Glenn and Maggie, I don't really know what's driving them at this point, so it's hard to really know what would sort of spark a fire with them. But obviously there's the group, of, there's Abraham, Rosita, and, uh, and the scientist. And so they're sort of a wild card here. I can't imagine they're going to end up leaving to go to Washington, D.C. So maybe they go in thinking they can leave and they're not allowed to for some reason. I, I don't really know beyond that. I think Beth's dead. You think she's already dead? I think she's dead. I hope she's not dead. I hope she's not either because I love her. Yes, and I, I don't think they're going to spend that much time in Terminus. I think they're going to realize pretty quickly this is not the place to be. And but it's definitely going to end the season there. Oh, they, yeah. They're, okay. they're going to spend this episode there. But I think some crazy deaths are going to happen. I don't think they're going to spend that long there. But what do I know? They've We're been just... headed there for like eight episodes. Yeah, I don't but... think you get to leave after two. But I don't know. I, I think they're going to they're going to throw a little surprise at us. Okay. We'll yeah. see. All a the dominoes. Party? A yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, all everything is set up for the what will certainly be a very violent season finale, mm -hmm. very heartbreaking season finale. Watch the dominoes fall down with us next week on our season finale review of The Walking Dead.